Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Would you uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the August 7th meeting of the Lorain County Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Kalo has the dog for today. Come here. Come here. You're nervous, huh? Our feature pet this week <laughs> is about a three-year-old lab, small lab, female. Uh, she was found on Bursley Road in Huntington Township. Uh, great personality. Uh, the dog kennel, she's just been wonderful to have. There sits when she gets a bath, friendly, uh, great personality. She'll be available for adoption on Saturday after three o'clock, so please stop by and uh, give her a good home. You got a good picture there, Hal? Thank you, Commissioner. In uh, lieu of a thought for today, I would like to recognize my former administrative assistant, Gloria Crutler, who is visiting us. Gloria, since she retired, lives in three different places. Um, I want you to stand up, Gloria, so Hal can get you on video. And I would also like to introduce Gloria's friend who's with her, Hilda. And Hilda uh, worked for about 15 years for the Lee County Board of Commissioners in Lee County, um, Florida. And when we vacationed there, we kind of check up on what Lee County was doing. So I intend to follow up with Hilda. Maybe we can learn some more things. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to see you both. And at 9.30, we have some presentations to make. It's our waste department. Mr. Billman? Dan Billman, Solid Waste Director for the Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Um, every year we do a Pride Day cleanup in the county, and uh, there's always lots of scouts that participate. Um, so this year we thought it'd be nice to give them a patch uh, to put on if they participate, and with the year underneath it. So next year when they participate and they have a, the badge, all they're going to need is 09 sticker. So it'll be an ongoing type of process. Um, we have with us uh, today um, three scout leaders, um, Fran Peters, Jody Barilla, and Jen Gary. And they brought along a couple of their charges. So. We also have Linda Jacobs um, that's going to come up, and she is the coordinator of Pride Day for Carlisle Township. So if you folks would like to come up. You want us to? Yeah. Oh, look at this. You have the actual patches, or we just have a... Um, does he have that? This is Jen. No, I'm no. Jody Barilla. I'm, Jody. I'm with the um, Avon Lake Cub Scout cast. And I unfortunately don't have any of my Cub Scouts with me here today, but it's nice to see the brownies here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Fran Peters. I'm oh, with, uh, we're, and this is Jen Geary. She's my co-leader. We are with uh, the Avon Lake Girl Scouts. We organize the Avon Lake Girl Scouts. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now you're on the spot. Go okay. <laughs> you are? I am Jen Geary, and I'm the co-leader with Fran, and we helped organize the uh, Avon Lake Girl Scout Cleanup Day back in May. I'm Linda Jacobs from Carlisle Township, Pride Day Coordinator, and we had a very good turnout of Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts at our event. Can you um, introduce the girls? Oh, sure. This is Bridget. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Claire. Yo. <laughs> this is Grace. Peace. Oh. This is Emma. Hi. <laughs> Okay, at this time, the commissioners have a patch that they're going to give to each one of the leaders. And then uh, after the meeting, uh, we have the numbers of the scouts that participated. And Sally Pecora will give you the patches that you need for your scouts. Ladies, young ladies, and gentlemen, thank you all for helping us to keep Lorain County green. It starts little, and you'll remember this when you're bigger, and you can teach your children. And we won't make any funny things yeah. either. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for your help, and thanks to your leaders for inspiring you. Um, while you're handy, Dan, I would like the clerk to move to item number 19. <clears throat> And we'll take care of solid waste business. Approve the request of $15,000 from Commissioner's Grant to the Sheffield Sheffield Lake School District for the stadium renovation project. Uh, Dan isn't even paying attention. He's busy passing out passes. And I know Mayor Pascura's here as yes. well as Tim Pelsick from Sheffield Sheffield. Good. Uh, we've moved to item number 19 uh, to facilitate your department. And uh, the guests that are here as well. Um. <coughs> the uh, I'm up here to uh, uh, recommend uh, approval of a grant going to the Sheffield Sheffield Lake um, School District. Um, they're going to be using recycled products for grandstands and press box. It's a dire need that they've had for a few years because the other ones were unsafe. They've got them torn down already and waiting to see if they can get this grant to get started on it. Today we have um, John Piscura here that would like to say a few words. He's the mayor of Sheffield Lake. And uh, I think we have another gentleman for, as a treasurer for the schools. Well, so, both of you, come on down. Yes. Welcome. <coughs> Everybody that doesn't know me, Commissioners, and Mayor John Pascara, Sheffield Lake, and on behalf of myself, Mayor John Hunter, our Superintendent of Schools, Will Folger, that couldn't be here, I wanted to thank you for, at the very least, your consideration of this grant. Um, you know, our schools are very important to us. We have a, a very active um, sports program. It, it, people are very enthusiastic about it in our city, and that makes our stadium one of the centerpieces of our, of our schools. Um, you know, all I can do is, 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 is thank you for, for the consideration and, uh, you know, many, many county <laughs> residents have had the opportunity to go watch games there and I'm sure that they'll be thankful for this improvement as well, sitting on something that's new and safe. So. Thank you, Mayor. And I'm Tim Pelsick, the business manager at Sheffield Schools. Um, I'm here to answer any questions that you might have, uh, you know, concerning our grant application. Uh, again, like John, we're hoping um, for a favorable vote regarding the grant. We did already take the bleachers down. 
and they were quite unsafe and we can't even date them how far back they went um, in time they were not ADA accessible um, and we just feared plus we could not get them passed through any type of health district inspection um, to put fans safely in those bleachers mm -hmm. now we actually downsized the project <coughs> Um, so the bleachers going in are going to be a little bit smaller than what we had because of the costs, you know, for those bleachers. But we hope to kind of continue with that process and add on to the visitor side because that's probably going to be about half the size of what we originally had um, in terms of capacity for seating. But there's a lot of plans in the works. We've got a lot of excitement going on in the district um, to try to keep expanding this and put a track in place. Um, add on to the bleachers, et cetera. So, um, again, I thank you for considering this, and um, we really hope for a favorable vote. Thank you, Tim. Questions, Hi. Commissioners? Well, Tim, didn't you guys have to move your first game or two to Avon? We did. Our, our first home game is now scheduled at Avon um, because the bleachers are down. We have no place to sit anyone, and we've got to get new bleachers um, contracted and constructed. So we're hoping, we're fortunate there because our next two games are actually away games. Um, so we won't have another home game until September the 12th. Uh, extremely tight time frame for us to get this, you know, constructed and done. But we're hoping we can pull that off. Who's your September 12th game against the home over? Um, local school? I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Should have brought the football coach, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, do you, John? Did you tell you that? Mayor, did you want to discuss the, the letter that you sent to us uh, this morning regarding the picnic tables and uh, park benches? I, I can. Okay. You sure? Um, I, I just sent a simple letter. Uh, for, for those of you that may not be aware, at, in Sheffield Lake we had a, um, um, our lakefront project, the boat launch, is now completed and open. It's open 24-7, free of charge for anybody who wants to use it. On the north side of our parking lot, we have a substantial um, lawn that, that tapers down to our seawall. And uh, more than ever before, we've had people down there enjoying the views, enjoying the sunset, watching the boats, watching the kids swim. Um, but there's no place to sit. <laughs> so uh, I, I sent a letter to you uh, requesting uh, help uh, or funding or anything that you could uh, possibly consider to help us get some, some recycled benches up there and, and or some picnic tables. Thank you. I did note it that it was in the form of a thank you letter, though. It was thanking us, I thought, for the, our, our participation, was it not? Maybe I just dreamed no. that. No. We did help you out, didn't we, on that? You did, thing? absolutely. <laughs> thank you very much. I thought, I thought we did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Had Any it not other? been for the commissioners, we probably wouldn't have gotten that built in the first place. Thank you. Thank You'll you. get with Dan Billman regarding the picnic tables or park benches. To I'm sorry? See, uh, speak with Dan Billman about the park benches yes, and or I picnic will. tables. and. Hopefully we can come up with okay. something. Thank you. Any other questions on this particular just project? Just comments. I think it's a good place for the money to go to versus just using it for marketing to put it into actually uh, rubber on the road and actually a benefit for the community because everybody from the county plays there. It's a great facility. I had family who went to Brookside High School, so. Very good. We have enough employees from Sheffield Lake who have been beating us up over this. <laughs> <laughs> Has Teresa been bothering you? <laughs> Teresa, Tony, you name it. Gee. Hey, they, hey. <coughs> you want to get what you can get. That's right. <laughs> uh, Thank you for coming this morning. I'll move for approval of the request as outlined. No, I'll second. second. I can add number oh, one. That's all right. Oh. Any questions? <laughs> I guess she told Ms. you. Blair. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. I guess I got the second. I got you thank did. you both for coming this morning. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. Us girls got to stick together, yeah, I'm right? I'm telling you, I'm getting beat up around here. <laughs> well, you know, when you're outnumbered, you have to take what comes your way. You're right. Um, <laughs> uh, under resolutions, number one, job and family services bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Investments? So moved. Second? Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Transfers? So moved. Second? Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions? So moved. Second? Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Travel expenses? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? 
Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under adult probation, instruct the clerk to advertise for bids for a design built project known as Lorain County Adult Probation Office Renovation Project. Notice will be in the Chronicle on August 11th and 18th. Mandatory pre bid will be at 2 p.m. on August 25th at adult probation and bids to be open at 2 p.m. on September 2nd in Commissioner's hearing room. Mr. Cordes, can you give us a little background on this? Like, uh, <clears throat> What is the estimated cost and what's going to transpire? Actually, Commissioner, that's why we're going out for a design build. I, I don't have any cost. We're not obligated to do anything. I, I, uh, and actually, we probably could have advertised without putting it on the agenda, but I just wanted to have some dialogue with, with the board. Uh, the adult uh, probation department is asking for some changes that they believe will increase uh, the efficiency of their space while providing additional safeguards for the employees over there. Uh, they do have a rather dangerous job. Um, but I don't I wasn't able to um, get cost data because we'd have to get an architect and etc cetera, etc cetera. so we've done design build before that's how we did our cafeteria downstairs uh, so we'll have people come in they'll look at the job we'll explain kind of what we want and then they'll submit a proposal with uh, the drawings and so forth and how much it'll cost and then at that point we can discuss whether we want to move forward or not is there any money set aside for such a project we, we have some money in our in our capital uh, budget for renovations um, I wish I could give you more specific data but this doesn't obligate us to anything other than advertise so we can uh, get proposals questions commissioners no so moved second Ms. Blair aye Mr. Kalo aye Ms. Kowski aye authorize various personnel actions as indicated on summary sheet from employees within jurisdiction of <coughs> county commissioners do we need an executive session I would like to have one commissioner I have a, a I have a couple of new hires I'd like to talk about at Golden Acres. Obviously, we always have a revolving door out there. Uh, update on an issue of uh, labor relations. Um, and I believe that'll be it. And both those topics are allowable under the Sunshine Law. So I'd like to uh, request an executive session to the conclusion of our regular board meeting <coughs> so that we can discuss those items as I mentioned. Thank you. Approve and waive the reading of the same for Lorraine County Board of Commissioners meeting minutes for July 24th and 31st, 2008. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Authorized salary increase to Larry Municipal Court Bailiff Martin H. Ebel, Jr., effective retroactive to July 20th at a bi new bi weekly rate of $825.38. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Instruct the clerk to advertise for bids for surplus property located at corner of Butternut Ridge Road and Indian Hollow Road, Gar Carlisle Township, further known as parcel 10 00007 Notice will be in the Chronicle on August 11th, 18th, 25th, and September 1st, and open at 2 p.m. on September 8th. Jerry, did you want to comment at all on this since your office was involved in um, the details of same? Uh, or not? This involves a piece of property in which um, uh, it was anticipated that there would be a need for a greater part of right of way along the road. As things develop, so that, that's not needed. So we just have a few little strips of property between the road and the current landowners. Um, we can't really, we have to, we have to put it up for bid in all likelihood the only person's that are likely to have any use for that property are the adjacent landowners. But this is the procedure, um, <coughs> excuse me, we need to go through in order to dispose of that property. But it's basically some unused portions of right away. Thank you. I'll second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kralo? Aye. Ms. Kasky? Aye. Authorize the donation of various office equipment and furniture to Main Street Elyria in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code 307.12b that is available at the Lorraine County Warehouse, such as boardroom table, bookshelves, chairs, desks, floor mats, and file cabinets. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kasky? Aye. Mr. Kralo? Aye. Authorize the County Minister to execute various 8038T forms for payment to the IRS for positive arbitrage to the en Energy Conservation Bond and Highway Improvement Note Series 2006 and Highway Improvement Note Series 2007. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Cordes, you want to explain why we, we're doing this? <coughs> we, uh, we didn't meet our, our drawdown requirements under uh, the Highway Improvement Notes or the Energy Conservation Bond. When, when we don't draw down within a specific uh, period of time uh, designated depending on what the issue is. Normally it's around two years. We need to yield restrict the, the uh, 
outstanding proceeds from, from those issues. Um, we ended up not spending a little bit over $200,000 from the energy conservation project, uh, although the project was done within the two years. And we, we, we did use that. We are using those funds to pay the ongoing maintenance cost. There's a, there's a fee every year for them to come in and do the assessment uh, to make sure that we're gaining the uh, <coughs> efficiencies that were guaranteed so we can pay for the, the bond. We should have yield restricted those funds, and we didn't do so. Uh, on the uh, highway improvement notes, that's been a rolling process, so it's really hard to capture a time period with that. Uh, after, the two, after the two years passed, we should have yield restricted anything that was remaining outside uh, of the expense on those, and we didn't do that either. The, the good part is all we're returning is what we made in excess of what we cost us to borrow. Uh, that's the positive, positive arbitrage side of it. If we borrow at 5%, we're earning 5.5%. We can't make that half a percent. So what we're sending out here is not a loss to us. It's something we should have never made in the first place because had we yield restricted the funds. Uh, so we caught this early. The last time, a couple of years ago, was a really big issue with the bond retirement fund and our sinking fund where there was excess funds. Uh, the uh, uh, so I, at this point, the county is not out anything that we should not have had in the first place. We're just making it uh, right with the, well, actually we're yield restricting it and then voting the excess proceeds. Who oversees this, Bond Council? Actually, we oversee it here in, in the county. Uh, the, the, uh, and we, get, we do have good Bond Council. We have so many outstanding issues, especially with the, with the highway notes. That's the, the more significant one. That it, it, was, it was hard to capture the time period. Um, in the in the future, we're just going to probably yield restrict earlier, uh, and when it looks like we're going to continue to roll notes, the one on the energy conservation was was our fault. Uh, the when we when we retained the the uh, the additional savings from the project to pay program cost, it never dawned on us that they would consider that still proceeds from the note because we moved it over, and we're using it. It wasn't it was in a separate account. Uh, and I remember when Lisa and I spoke about this about two years ago. Uh, was, was it about two years ago? A year and a half ago? Uh, uh, we, we, we thought the monies were expended because we were using them for these other costs and we had moved it into uh, a separate account to do that. Uh, council advised us that w while we may be able to make that argument, we probably, until the money is exhausted on the program, we probably shouldn't and that we should yield restrict it. Other questions? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kato? Aye. Ms. Koski? Aye. Aye. Community Development, file an application to the State of Ohio Department of Development to support an application for assistance on a job ready sites program for Lorraine County Regional Airport. Commissioners hereby commit to provide sewer service to the site improvement project. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Wait, Ms. Mr. Cordes wants to uh, comment. I, I would like Rebecca to just kind of just, well, I mean, we know what's <laughs> going on, but kind of excited because while we haven't been picked yet, we, we are in the upper tier and you know sometimes it's, it's nice to let people know that how hard you are working for them. Uh, I'm hopeful we're going to get picked and we do. It's going to be great for our industrial site out at the airport and Rebecca's been working very, very hard on this. Uh, and you know sometimes you got to be a finalist several times before you can be the winner and we're a finalist right now, aren't we not? We're, yes, we made it to the, uh, we made it through the first cut we're in the second cut uh, for the job ready site. Yesterday, we actually had uh, the state of Ohio's consultant out to um, go over the application and review the air or, or view the airport site itself. He took lots of pictures. Was very impressed because of the readiness of the site. So, uh, the next step in this process, following this, is what's called a resolution for cure. When the initial resolution was passed to apply for this. We did not have Section 5 in the resolution, and because the county commissioners are responsible for this, the installation of the sewers at that site, we just need to say that the commissioners will agree to provide the sewer service to that site. So um, it was kind of a no-brainer, and I guess uh, it should have been in the first resolution, and it wasn't. So this is a resolution to cure that first one. Um, but. At any rate, September 11th, we are scheduled to uh, be down at the State of Ohio at ODOD to do a presentation on our project. So we'll be going down with the PowerPoint, and and uh, there should be a few of us going down 
uh, to put our best foot forward. We're going to have about 20 minutes to do this presentation and say why we're better than the other 57 applicants that we're competing against in this in this process. So uh, it's pretty important, and we're excited that uh, we're going to have that opportunity to put our best foot forward at the state and very encouraged that we'll have a positive response. Are they only going to give one, or are they going to give more no, than one? No, they will give more than one, but at this point, um, you know, everybody comes in. The maximum you can receive is $5 million. Uh, of course, they cannot fund all 57 of them, but they will definitely be funding a portion of them in this round, and then there may be some funded in a, a later review process. So um, I'm not quite sure how they're going to break it down, and they haven't really indicated how it'll be broken down. But if we do get awarded, we should be notified in November uh, following this, uh, uh, the um, September 11th presentations and then they'll make a decision by November we'll know and once we know we can start on the project you know we can go out to for engineering and bid to get a building built out why don't there. we why don't you just briefly explain what we can do if we are awarded what we're hoping to do if mm -hmm. we're awarded if we're awarded uh, the funds what we hope to do is the uh, access road that is to the east of the site off of Russia Road. Uh, the, the initial phase that we'd like to do is take that access road and make it, uh, in, make improvements to it so that you can actually put a business uh, on that, uh, that site to the um, east of the property. I don't know if you're familiar with where that road goes in, but what we want to do is build a 50,000 square foot speculation building there. We want to make the improvements to the road, and we want to uh, bring all the utilities to that site. It may also involve uh, putting an electric substation at that site. So that we're looking at, a, you know, about a $6 million project, and we've asked the state for $4.2 million, I believe. The, the commissioners, you know, uh, we've had that area over by the airport. Uh, that we wanted to develop as an industrial site to bring businesses to the airport for a number of years. And it, and it languished and really it was never worked on. And, and with Rebecca's help and, and Ron's help, you know, we, we've kind of blown the dust off a few things and we're trying to get that moving like all the improvements we've been doing out at the airport. Uh, the, the best way to lure a tenant is to get a spec building up and, and then, you know, try to get folks to come out there once we have it. It's, it's awful hard to law business, uh, especially to that area of the county, when you have to go, you have to start at ground zero. Uh, but uh, you can see that we're, we're working on a lot of projects, and I know that a lot of times the public asks you what you're doing and why we haven't been successful. They may tell us no this time, but they're going to see us next year and the year after that. They're going to see us every time until they give us something, uh, mm -hmm. because we deserve it here in Lorain County. So we're just not going to go away, so they might as well just give it to us the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. Ms. Clark? Aye. For the second time. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Under Job and Families, the men purchase of service agreement with Lorain County Workforce Development Agency for state fiscal year 09. Minimum is to reflect an increase of 20000 for a total contract value of $3,744,442, which is the allocation of the WIA funds for Job and Families Fiscal Services, effective retroactive to July 1st, 2008 through June 30th, 2009. An authorized director to execute on behalf of the board with prosecutors approved by SD4. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Under sanitary release retainage to ABC Piping Company, Brooklyn Heights, Ohio, in the amount of $16,588, plus interest as final payment for the Plum Creek Wastewater Treatment Improvement. County Engineer has reviewed and all documentation has been received. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under the Engineer War Contract to Don Molds Plantation, Inc., North Ridgeville, in the amount of $114,659.60 for the Oban O'Leary Road Bridge Number 260 reconstruction. Three bids were received on July 28th, this being the most responsive, complying with specifications, and the Engineer's estimate was $120,000. Issue notice to proceed on or before September 1st, to complete on or before November 1st. Authorized County Administrator to notify the County Auditor to release retainage at completion of the project and $45,989.60 will be paid from the bridge account projects and the balance will be OPWC. So moved. Second. Discussion? 
Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Amend various <clears throat> resolutions awarding contracts to admit materials to be paid from and replaced with payment will be made by OPWC directly to the vendor, which would be resolution 08466 adopted June 26, awarding contract to Ohio Bridge Corp, Cambridge in the amount of $29,277 for structural repairs to repair Durkee Road Bridge 0455 Eden Township. And resolution 08496 adopted July 10th, Awarding contract to United Precast Inc. Mount Vernon in the amount of $47,868 for materials for various bridges throughout the county. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Environmental Health approve and enter in the general liability coverage agreement provided by course in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code 2744.08 in the amount of $3,331.16. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Under soil and water, approve and enter into the general liability coverage agreement provided per course in accordance with the Ohio Re Revised Code 2744.08 in the amount of $1,843.58. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Cordes, County Minister? I have no additional reports this morning. Thank you. Mr. Ennis, Assistant County Prosecutor? I would like to have an executive session with the commissioners regarding pending litigation. Commissioner's report. Well, Friday, first I want to commend Commissioner Blair for putting a very informative community alliance program together. It was, it was exceptional, I think. Um, Friday and Saturday was uh, Ron, my fiance's 30-year class reunion, so I want to say hi to all the class of 78. They were really nice people, from the east, mostly from the east side of Loring, where I grew up. On um, Tuesday, I had a Team Lorain County Executive Board meeting, and Wednesday, I met with the Lorain County Association of Realtors, and we talked about everything from <coughs> foreclosures, which is very important to them, and travel, and all, all, types, all types of things, so it was nice to meet with them also. And I think that's the end of my report. Yeah, busy week. I uh, also met with Lowcar yesterday, did a very nice job holding their meeting. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Main Street and Amherst. Uh, we are one of their funding agencies. Uh, they did a very nice job with their dancing on Main Street. Great turnout downtown. Uh, it was nice to see my budget director there. Lisa, we did It was, was very she nice. Dancing? Was she yes, dancing? she was. Good girl, Lisa. Uh, also, what else did we have? This week, just a boatload of stuff. On uh, Tuesday, I had the opportunity to meet with Ann Hill from Governor Strickland's office and State Senator Sue Morano with Spring Growth Corporation and Great Lakes Wind member Mike Challender uh, speaking about the wind le legislation going out with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. The energy bill went into effect uh, August 2nd, uh, and there's 120 days to make comments on how we're actually going to go forward on making the rules and regulations on that. And then after that, um, we met with uh, folks from City of Overland, David Sonner, President of City Council out there, people from their public utilities, and sust sustainability director of Overland College on wind. We were working with a gentleman from Green Energy, Kemp Jaycox. I haven't had a chance to forward this to my commissioners yet, but I'll be sending a request. Uh, Marcy Captor sponsored uh, a bill that awards money to communities to do wind studies. Uh, we already know with the previous test done that Lorraine County sits in a very prime location, specifically directly off the city of Lorraine. Uh, we need to put wind monitors up there and the city of Oberlin with Oberlin College a couple years ago put up their own tower and metric equipment. It's now sitting on hold, right David? Uh, what we're looking at, if we can receive the $7,500 grant from the earmarked money uh, through Marcy Captor, with green energy, it needs about a $10,000 match to do the setup, to actually get it installed. And when speaking with David Sonner, he'd like to, for, with a request from the Board of Commissioners and Lorraine Grove, ask if the City of Oberlin would like to donate their equipment. And I would like to ask probably Oberlin College if they would help with the dollars to install the second tower and metric equipment on the lakefront in the City of Lorraine. We're all aware that alternative energy and renewable resources are very important. So I'll be sending a letter forward to uh, your city council for Monday asking their participation. David Sonner was very excited. Uh, your public utilities people in Oberlin College, they said they're going to be carbon neutral by 2020, Oberlin College. 
So I can't wait to see that plan they're going to bring out. So I'll forward this to you guys, commissioners. It's about, I don't know, 150 pages. Don't you have a synopsis? I have to make one. Read. I have to make a well, summary. So I didn't get that, that far yet. So mm -hmm. I will get it to you in the next but day or two. Save a couple trees and just do a synopsis. Okay, I will get a summary. But I'm going to look for support on that. Uh, also, starting this Sunday, Premier Soccer Academy is a World Youth Tournament. Uh, it's going to be a great week. Uh, they're expecting anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 people a day all week long and then closing next weekend. So it's going to be very exciting in Lorraine. A lot of new people coming out. I'd like to thank the Metro Parks and vendors around the county are helping participate and sponsor finding events for these high school kids to do during the week when they're not playing. So I'd like to thank Dan Martin. He's jumped right on board along with uh, a few other vendors in town within the county. So thank you very much in my report, Commissioner. Thank you, and that's fascinating um, that they're coming to us from all over the world. Um, thank you for your comments on the Alliance meeting. Uh, um, Madam Commissioner, I think it should be noted that this was a team effort and you're part of the team. And um, uh, Teresa just handed me a note that the Alliance meeting, which occurred last Friday, and it lasted a pretty long time, but all of the speakers were very informative. It will be aired on the college channel uh, starting Friday evening, August the 8th, and Saturday, Sunday, and then Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, we'll also have it on our website when we get it there. I'm not sure when it'll get there, but uh, again, um, this Friday, August the 8th, August the 9th, the 10th, and the 12th at 7 p.m. And uh, I guess we didn't talk about wind, but we talked about water extensively, mm -hmm. and it was it was very impressive. So, and then I at last evening, uh, State Treasurer Richard Cordray was at a reception at Lorraine County Community College, and Richard, uh, uh, as many of you may know, is uh, running for the Ohio Attorney General seat, and uh, he gave me a little gift. I um, want you to pick it up, Hal. I didn't even know this thing existed. This is a 2000, 2006 publication, The Road to Blue. It features all of the state uh, Democrat candidates. Sorry if you're Republican. Uh, but he also autographed it. And there's a picture of Richard and I in the Wellington Parade, the uh, Fourth of July Parade. So it's pretty neat. So I was. I took the book home and went through all of it last night. But a picture is worth a thousand words. And let me tell you, there's less words and more pictures than this. Mm -hmm. And it was really neat. So I think it's probably still available for purchase if anybody would like mm -hmm. to uh, have a copy of it. Uh, I'll find out where you might get one. Thank you. That's my report. Board correspondence. I'll move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Square. Aye. Ms. Kresge. Aye. Mr. Kaler. Aye. Public comment. We're home free from Oberlin. No speakers today. Look at that. Anyone else? Okay, I move we go into executive. Wait, I think, did you want to come? Is up? there? Oh, yeah, please come forward. I'm sorry. You're not allowed to sit in the back of the room. You have to come forward. Please just state your name and what your issue is. Tamala Grubb, Main Street, Elyria. Thank you, Tamala. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. I just wanted to make sure that I um, expressed how thankful we are for the approval of the office equipment. And um, hopefully there is a floor mat so I can move across the carpet a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, we'd like to thank you so much for allowing us to use the property on the corner of Cedar and Broad for the farmer's market. It's something that's definitely needed in the downtown. And as co of course, you know that we are for the betterment of the downtown. So um, we really, we greatly appreciate that use. And I think you have an event coming up on August 30th? Yes, we do. We when have the Cleveland you? Pops. Mm -hmm. They will be um, playing on the courthouse steps on August 30th at seven o'clock. And then we also have our, beforehand we have a VIP for our members, um, wine and cheese reception and VIP seating at the Pops. Lots of exciting We're things excited. going yes, on. Yes, it's very busy right now. That's good. <laughs> You're doing a good job on our behalf. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? I move we go into executive session for the purposes outlined by. I'll second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Aye. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorraine County Administration Building, 
226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Pedestrian injuries represent the second largest number in motor-related deaths. In the current report by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, of the 812 traffic fatalities for children ages 5 to 9, almost one-third, that's 254, were pedestrian fatalities. These numbers were just very staggering to me in this office. Most of these were from pedestrian crossings. Children not educated in crossing streets where there are sidewalks and obviously uh, stoplights or where there are no sidewalks and there are stop signs. So basically um, it was based on the fact that they aren't getting proper education or they hadn't, hadn't any education on how to cross streets with sidewalks or without sidewalks. So that's what really got us motivated to look into this and, and do something about it. County Engineer's Office is quite proud to announce that the Safe Routes to School program has been initiated throughout Lorain County. We're very excited about this. To help these children from grades K to 4, uh, teaching them to walk the streets safely is, uh, is very important to us. Uh, we've seen statistics that uh, quite frankly shock us. Uh, many times we read and see stories of uh, pedestrians uh, being uh, hit by automobiles in Lorain County and, and, and it just uh, tears my heart to see these children from K to 4 part of that. This program is to stop that, to help diminish those type of situations and educate these children on walking, crossing the street safely. And we're quite happy to announce that. Most of our workshop was developed and made in-house. Simulated sidewalks, uh, simulated streets. We have uh, actual working stoplights. We have the pedestrian crossing signs that actually work. We have operational railroad crossings. We also have the regular road signs like your pedestrian crossing, your stop sign, your railroad sign. So we have all of these different things that the children can not only visualize, but then we actually interact the children in those situations so they can not only see, but they can use these in their learning abilities on how to cross the streets with and without sidewalks. We've had so many good responses back from the children and of course it's just like anything else with children when you ask for volunteers when you're talking in a group of 60 and you can only have eight um, it's amazing at the hands that go up you know does anybody want to volunteer well everybody wants to volunteer we make them go over these uh, skills that we're trying to teach them not only the volunteers but the group as a whole so basically we have the whole class interacting so if they say left right left behind you in front of you once they say it at least eight or ten times before the workshop uh, is over so uh, we've had many uh, teachers and many uh, principals tell us um, and we even had one child that came up to us and said you know what Ms. Spansky, we were going across the street the other day and we remembered look left, look right, look left. So that was very rewarding. And uh, so I think the repetition, the interaction um, with the children and with the items in our workshop is very important to them and to us. Before you even go into the safety part of it, they're in awe over the traffic light and then our uh, railroad crossing signals actually work so they're just like oh ooh. and uh, we get up there and we tell them and we even give them some trick questions you know we'll say well we can see that train all the way down the track do you think we can make it because you're fast and I'm fast and we can run and of course they're they're very enthusiastic and no we shouldn't do this so we teach them that in some 
urban areas, you will not have the gates that come down to keep you actually from crossing. That you may just have two sets of tracks. And just because one goes by and the signals stop doesn't mean that another one can't come from the other direction. So we tell them it's very, very imperative that they stay back from the tracks and they wait till those signals stop and to look both ways. And even once those signals stop, to look both ways and they should never run across the railroad tracks. They should walk and keep, continue to look both ways because it's not safe and they could fall. They could injure themselves if they're alone, if they're not with someone. Uh, it could be very dangerous because not only could they injure themselves, they may not have help if there is a train coming because they are so small. And, and as you know, some of those tracks are very large and you're talking in a in kindergarten through fourth grade, some of those children are very small children. The, the main thing is, is that we tell them that only you know when it's safe. You have to make that ultimate decision. So make sure that you know that it's safe before you cross those railroad tracks or a street. One of the other things that we cover in the safety workshop, um, and it's also repeated in our video, children don't have that perception of the miles per hour it's very dangerous and the same thing with trains we tell them that train could take you know forever it's way down there but we don't know the actual miles per hour we decided um, to use two different videos the first one is geared for kindergarten and first grade and that is uh, Otto the Otto put out by AAA Hi kids! A lot of times you have to walk to get to places. And when you're walking, you have to be especially careful of cars and bicycles. Oh no! Those kids are walking the wrong way! That's dangerous! I'm going to talk with these kids. Down at the clubhouse, they're talking about the safe way to walk on streets without sidewalks. I say you can walk across the street anywhere you want, as long as you look first. And don't get squished flat by a car. That's a fairly simple way of looking at safety. There are actual rules and laws for walking. Yeah, but the most important one is you don't get squished flat. Who's right, Maggie? Patrick or us? I guess in a sense, everyone's right. The main idea is to get there safely, but there are some rules to help you get there safely, like don't run out into the street without looking. The second video, uh, we show second, third, and fourth grade. And uh, it is put together by the National Safety Council along with Honda, and they developed the first humanoid robot. This is Asuna. How come you dressed in a robot suit? It's not a suit. I'm a real robot. My name, Asimo, stands for Advanced Step in Innovative Mobility. I'm the world's most advanced humanoid robot. <laughs> I can walk forwards, backwards, and even climb stairs just like a human. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what's the first rule about crossing the street? Stopping at curbs. Correct. <laughs> first, always stop at the curb then make sure no cars are coming. You want to look left. It's clear. Then right to see if any cars are coming from the other direction. That's clear too. Cars move fast. There might already be a new car to the left. So look left again. Car coming. See what I mean? Okay, he's gone. Kids Let's love go. this. They relate to Asimo as well as the younger ch children relate to Otto who is an animated automobile and he tells them about crossing streets. Uh, Osimo does the same thing and he actually goes through with the, the uh, children and tells them how to cross the street at an intersection with a traffic light with the pedestrian crossing. He also teaches them how to cross uh, because a lot of children at schools uh, have parked cars he goes over the issues of how to cross when there are parked cars. Um, so he does a number of different things, how to cross the street when there are no sidewalks. So they both cover the basic skills. One is just uh, geared a little bit more for the different age groups. Um, our response has been amazing. 
not only from the children. We have received numerous cards. Um, we have, I have a whole box of thank yous uh, from children from the schools that where we have uh, that have participated in our workshop. We've had nothing but a positive response back throughout the communities that we visited this year. I think it was really nice because they had a real live robot talk to you about safety and you got to actually do what he said was safe. He said when there are parked cars to make sure there are no drivers in before you cross the street. Um, I saw that um, we could um, like know what to do when there's like cars coming not to go in the middle of the road so you don't get hurt. You have to look left, right, left, behind the shoulder, and then straight. If they don't know how to stop at sidewalks, then I'll tell them how to. If they don't know how to cross without sidewalks, then I'll tell them how to do that too, because that's what we learned. Um, I think that it was good because I didn't know that you had the five ways, which were left, right, left, and then over your shoulder, and then ahead of you. I thought that crossing the road was really good for little kids if they don't know what to do by crossing the road. It's a good idea because, um, like I said, the kids could walk through the whole process of crossing streets with, us, with the crosswalk, without a crosswalk, at the intersection, what happens if you're crossing in between two parked cars. Those are things that parents don't teach their kids. They go to Safety Town and they learn left, look left, look right, look left again, and they go. And even my own son, who's a kindergartner, he just did Safety Town, and I still catch him flying across the street. And all I have to do is say, Matthew, remember Osimo? And he stops, and he thinks, and he does all the steps that he was taught in the, in the video. It was a great refresher, especially Absolutely. for them, um, now knowing you know, what to do and kind of um, even additional things that they maybe not have, may not have been told or considered before. Most of the kids did their little safety program back when they were getting ready to go to kindergarten. They start out learning all those safety rules. Then as time goes on, if you don't re reinforce those safety rules and keep telling them, just like we do as adults, we think we're safe. We don't have to follow those rules anymore. We can do what we want. We can take a chance and run across the road. And um, I think this program was very good at reinforcing the fact that even though we're growing up, we still have to be careful. We still have to follow the signs. We still have to follow the railroad crossings, especially around here in Amherst. We tend to have a little trouble with the railroad crossings and kids wanting to play on them. So I think it was a good review. Um, I think it was done in a fun learning way and the kids really enjoyed it. We were very happy to have everyone here at St. Joseph's School. If it saves one life, we feel like we've made a contribution. It's our way to give back to the communities. Every year in Lorain County, hundreds of children are abused and neglected. Many are removed from their homes for their protection. Judges must decide their futures, but they need information to make these critical decisions. You can provide this information through Voices for Children. Volunteers are men and women from all walks of life with no special or legal background who work alongside attorneys, social workers, and other court employees. As an officer of the court, you find out as much as you can about the child. You will review records, interview parents and relatives, foster parents, talk to teachers, neighbors, and most importantly, the child. When the volunteer has a complete profile, he or she appears in court to recommend what is best for the child's future. You've heard the statistics on child abuse. Now is your chance to do something about it. You don't need any special qualifications, only the desire to protect local children who desperately need your help. 
To become a special advocate or for more information on our next training session, call Voices for Children today. Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Would you uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the August 7th meeting of the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Kalo has the dog for today. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Good dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. come here. You're nervous, huh? Our featured pet this week <laughs> is about a three year old lab, small lab, female. Uh, she was found on Bursley Road in Huntington Township. Uh, great personality. Uh, the dog kennel, she's just been wonderful to have. There sits good. when she gets a bath, friendly, uh, great personality. She'll be available for adoption on Saturday after 3 o'clock, so please stop by and uh, give her a good home. Got a good picture there, Al? Thank you, Commissioner. In uh, lieu of a thought for today, I would like to recognize my former administrative assistant, Gloria Crutler, who is visiting us. Gloria, since she retired, lives in three different places. Um, I want you to stand up, Gloria, so Hal can get you on video. And I would also like to introduce Gloria's friend who's with her, Hilda. And Hilda uh, worked for about 15 years for the Lee County Board of Commissioners in Lee County, um, Florida. And when we vacationed there, we kind of check up on what Lee County was doing. So I intend to follow up with Hilda. Maybe we can learn some more things. Welcome, ladies. Um, it's a pleasure to see you both. And at 9.30, we have some presentations to make with our waste department. Mr. Billman? Dan Billman, Solid Waste Director for the Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Um, every year we do a Pride Day cleanup in the county, and uh, there's always lots of scouts that participate. Um, so this year, we thought it'd be nice to give them a patch uh, to put on if they participate and with the year underneath it. So next year when they participate and they have a, the badge, all they're going to need is 09 sticker. So it'll be an ongoing type of process. Um, we have with us uh, today um, three scout leaders. Um, Fran Peters, Jody Barilla, and Jen Gary, and they brought along a couple of their charges. So we also have Linda Jacobs um, that's going to come up, and she is the coordinator of Pride Day for Carlisle Township. So if you folks would like to come up. You want us to? Yeah. Oh, look at this. You have the actual patches, or we just have a. Um, this is Jen. No, I'm Jody Barilla. I'm with the um, Avon Lake Cup Scout Cat. And I unfortunately don't have any of my Cup Scouts with me here today, but it's nice to see the brownies here. Yeah. <laughs> 
And I'm Fran Peters. I'm oh, with, uh, we're, and this is Jen Geary. She's my co-leader. We are with uh, the Avon Lake Girl Scouts. We organize the Avon Lake Girl Scouts. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I am Jen Geary, and I'm the co-leader with Fran, and we helped organize the uh, Avon Lake Girl Scout Cleanup Day back in May. Okay. I'm Linda Jacobs from Carlisle Township, Pride Day Coordinator, and we had a very good turnout of Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts at our event. Can you um, introduce the girls? Oh, sure. Bridget, say hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Claire. Yo. Oh, this is Grace. Peace. Oh, this is Emma. Hi. How you follow that right up? I know. Oh, and would you like to say hi? This is Connor. <laughs> okay, at this time, the commissioners have a patch that they're going to give to each one of the leaders and then uh, after the meeting uh, we have the numbers of the scouts that participated and Sally Pecora will give you the patches that you need for your scouts. The real patches. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you uh, ladies, young ladies, and gentlemen, thank you all for helping us to keep Lorraine County green. It starts little, and you'll remember this when you're bigger, and you can teach your children. And we won't make any funny things yeah. either. Okay? <laughs> thank you all for your help, and thanks to your leaders for inspiring you. While you're handy, Dan, I would like the clerk to move to item number 19. <clears throat> and we'll take care of Salaway's business. Approve the request of $15,000 from Commissioner's Grant to the Sheffield Sheffield Lake School District for the stadium renovation project. Uh, Dan isn't even paying attention. He's busy passing out passes. And I know Mayor Pascura's here as yes. well as Tim Pelsick from Sheffield Sheffield. Good. Uh, we've moved to item number 19 uh, to facilitate your department. and the guests that are here as well. Um, <coughs> the, uh, I'm up here to uh, uh, recommend uh, approval of a grant going to the Sheffield, Sheffield Lake um, School District. Um, they're going to be using recycled products for grandstands and press box. It's a dire need that they've had for a few years because the other ones were unsafe. They've got them torn down already and waiting to see if they can get this grant to get started on it. Today we have um, John Piscura here that would like to say a few words. He's the mayor of Sheffield Lake. And um, I think we have another gentleman for, uh, as a treasurer for the schools. Well, so, both of you, come on down. Yes. Welcome. <clears throat> well, for everybody that doesn't know me, Commissioners, Mayor John Pascara, Sheffield Lake, and on behalf of myself, Mayor John Hunter, our superintendent of schools, Will Folger, that couldn't be here, I wanted to thank you for, at the very least, your consideration of this grant. Um, you know, our schools are very important to us. We have a, a very active um, sports program. It, it, people are very enthusiastic about it in our city, and that makes our stadium one of the centerpieces of our, of our schools. Um, you know, all I could do is, 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 is thank you for, for the consideration and, uh, you know, many, many county <laughs> residents have had the opportunity to go watch games there and I'm sure that they'll be thankful for this improvement as well, sitting on something that's new and safe. So. Thank you, Mayor. And I'm Tim Pelsick, the business manager at Sheffield Schools. Um, 
I'm here to answer any questions that you might have, uh, you know, concerning our grant application. Uh, again, like John, we're hoping um, for a favorable vote regarding the grant. We did already take the bleachers down, and they were quite unsafe, and we can't even date them how far back they went um, in time. They were not ADA accessible, um, and we just feared. Plus, we could not get them passed through any type of health district inspection um, to put fans safely in those bleachers. Mm -hmm. Now, we actually downsized the project, <coughs> um, so the bleachers going in are going to be a little bit smaller than what we had because of the costs, you know, for those bleachers. But we hope to kind of continue with that process and add on to the visitor side because that's probably going to be about half the size of what we originally had. Um, in terms of capacity for seating. But there's a lot of plans in the works. We've got a lot of excitement going on in the district um, to try to keep expanding this and put a track in place, um, add on to the bleachers, et cetera. So um, again, I thank you for considering this and um, we really hope for a favorable vote. Thank you, Tim. Questions, commissioners? Well, Tim, didn't you guys have to move your first game or two to Avon? We did. Our, our first home game is now scheduled at Avon. Um, because the bleachers are down, we have no place to sit anyone, and we've got to get new bleachers um, contracted and constructed. So we're hoping, we're fortunate there because our next two games are actually away games. Um, so we won't have another home game until September the 12th. Uh, extremely tight time frame for us to get this, you know, constructed and done, but we're hoping we can pull that off. Who's your September 12th game against the home opener? Um, local school? I'm, I'm not sure. Be honest with you. Should have brought the football coach, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, do you, John? Did, did you that? Mayor, did you want to discuss the, the letter that you sent to us uh, this morning regarding the picnic tables and uh, park benches? I, I can. Okay. You sure? Um, I, I just sent a simple letter. Uh, for, for those of you that may not be aware, at, in Sheffield Lake, we had a um, um, our Lakefront project, the boat launch, is now completed and open. It's open 24-7, free of charge for anybody who wants to use it. On the north side of our parking lot, we have a substantial um, lawn that, that tapers down to our seawall. And uh, more than ever before, we've had people down there enjoying the views, enjoying the sunset, watching the boats, watching the kids swim. Um, but there's no place to sit. <laughs> So uh, I, I sent a letter to you uh, requesting uh, help uh, or funding or anything that you could uh, possibly consider to help us get some, some recycled benches up there and, and or some picnic tables. Okay. I did note that it was in the form of a thank you letter though. It was thanking us, I thought, for the, our, our participation, was it not? Maybe I just dreamed no. that. No. We did help you out, didn't we, on that? You project? did, absolutely. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. I thought, I thought we did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Had Any it not other? been for the commissioners, we probably wouldn't have gotten that built in the first place. Thank you. Thank You'll you. get with Dan Billman regarding the picnic tables or park benches. To I'm sorry? See, uh, speak with Dan Billman about the park benches yes, and or picnic tables, and hopefully we can come up with okay. something. Thank you. Any other questions on this particular just project? Just comments. I think it's a good place for the money to go to versus just using it for marketing to put it into actually... Uh, rubber on the road and actually a benefit for the community because everybody from the county plays there. It's a great facility. I had family who went to Brookside High School, so. Very good. We have enough employees from Sheffield Lake who've been beating us up over this. <laughs> Has Teresa been bothering you? Teresa, Tony, you name it. Gee, they. Hey. <coughs> you gotta get what you can get. That's right. Uh, thank you for coming this morning. I'll move for approval of the request as outlined. No, I'll second. second. I guess she told Ms. you. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. I guess I got the second. I I got thank you did. both for coming this morning. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. Us girls got to stick together, yeah, right? I'm telling you, I'm getting beat up around here. <laughs> well, you know, when you're outnumbered, you have to take what comes your way. You're right. <laughs> uh, under resolutions, number one, job and family services bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Transfers? So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. No advances, no repayments. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. 
Travel expenses? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalen? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kalen? Aye. Under adult probation, instruct the clerk to advertise for bids for a design built project known as Lorraine County Adult Probation Office Renovation Project. Notice will be in the Chronicle on August 11th and 18th. Mandatory pre bid will be at 2 p.m. on August 25th at adult probation and bids to be open at 2 p.m. on September 2nd in Commissioner's hearing room. Mr. Cordes, can you give us a little background on this? Like, uh, <clears throat> what is the estimated cost and what's going to transpire? Actually, Commissioner, that's why we're going out for design build. I, I don't have any cost. We're not obligated to do anything. I, I, uh, and actually, we probably could have advertised without putting it on the agenda, but I just wanted to have some dialogue with, with the board. Uh, the adult uh, probation department is asking for some changes that they believe will increase uh, the efficiency of their space while providing additional safeguards for the employees over there. Uh, they do have a rather dangerous job. Um, but I don't, I wasn't able to um, get cost data because we'd have to get an architect and et cetera, et cetera. So we've done design build before. That's how we did our cafeteria downstairs. Uh, so we'll have people come in they'll look at the job we'll explain kind of what we want and then they'll submit a proposal with uh, the drawings and so forth and how much it'll cost and then at that point we can discuss whether we want to move forward or not is there any money set aside for such a project we, we have some money in our in our capital uh, budget for renovations um, i wish i could give you more specific data but this doesn't obligate us to anything other than to advertise so we can uh, get proposals questions commissioners no so moved. Second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Authorize various personnel actions as indicated on summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction of <coughs> the county commissioners. Do we need an executive session? I would like to have one commissioner. I have a, uh, I have a couple of new hires I'd like to talk about at Golden Acres. Obviously, we always have a revolving door out there. Uh, update on an issue of uh, labor relations. Um, And I believe that'll be it. Both those topics are allowable under the Sunshine Law. So I'd like to uh, request an executive session to the conclusion of our regular board meeting <coughs> so that we can discuss those items as I mentioned. Thank you. Approve and waive the reading of the same for the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners meeting minutes for July 24th and 31st, 2008. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Authorized salary increase to Larry Municipal Court Bailiff Martin H. Ebel Jr. effective retroactive to July 20th at a bi new bi weekly rate of $825.38. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Instruct the clerk to advertise for bids for surplus property located at the corner of Butternut Ridge Road and Indian Hollow Road, Gar Carlisle Township, further known as parcel 10 00007 Notice will be in the Chronicle on August 11th, 18th, 25th, and September 1st and open at 2 p.m. on September 8th. Jerry, did you want to comment at all on this since your office was involved in um, the details of same or uh, not? This involves a piece of property in which um, uh, it was anticipated that there would be a need for a greater part of right of way along the road. As things develop, so that, that's not needed. So we just have a few little strips of property between the road and the current landowners. Um, we can't really, we have to, we have to put it up for bid in all likelihood. The only persons that are likely to have any use for that property are the adjacent landowners. But this is the procedure, um, <coughs> excuse me, we need to go through in order to dispose of that property. But it's basically some unused portions of right away. Thank you. I'll second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kralo? Aye. Ms. Cassidy? Aye. Authorize the donation of various office equipment and furniture to Main Street Larry in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code 307.12b that is available at the Lorraine County Warehouse, such as boardroom table, bookshelves, chairs, desks, floor mats, and file cabinets. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Kasky? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Authorize County Minister to execute various 8038T forms for payment to the IRS for positive arbitrage to the en Energy Conservation Bond and Highway Improvement Note Series 2006 and Highway Improvement Note Series 2007. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Cordes, you want to explain why we, we're doing this? <coughs> we uh, we didn't meet our, our drawdown requirements under uh, the Highway Improvement Notes or the Energy Conservation Bond. When when we don't draw down within a specific 
uh, period of time uh, designated depending on what the issue is. <laughs> Normally it's around two years. We need to yield restrict the, the uh, outstanding proceeds from, from those issues. Um, we ended up not spending a little bit over $200,000 from the energy conservation project, uh, although the project was done within the two years. And we, we did use that. We are using those funds to pay the ongoing maintenance cost. There's a, there's a fee every year for them to come in and do the assessment uh, to make sure that we're gaining the uh, <coughs> efficiencies that were guaranteed so we can pay for the, the bond. We should have yield restricted those funds, and we didn't do so. Uh, on the uh, highway improvement notes, that's been a rolling process, so it's really hard to capture a time period with that. Uh, after, the two, after the two years passed, we should have yield restricted anything that was remaining outside uh, of the expense on those, and we didn't do that either. The, the good part is all we're returning is what we made in excess of what we cost us to borrow. Uh, that's the positive, positive opportunity.